puffier the better, I say. When talking sleeves, not one's complexion. Hello my lovelies, I hope you've had a really fabulous week. Welcome to the first sewing video in my sewing room. And in today's video, I am going to be using Simplicity 8447, which has got to be one of my most used patterns that I've bought and not drafted myself, I should say. And I've had it in mind for quite a while now to make a shirt dress. My first thing in any project is to do some planning pages in my sketchbook. I really enjoy the start of a project when I work like this. So I make the pages look all pretty, I think they're pretty, and collect images and materials and information and usually do a double page spread. I've named this the 1939 dress because the style of shirt dress is based on late 30s, early 40s, staple designs from the time and these images are all collected from my Pinterest boards. I have a 1940s seamstress board and also a 1940s board and all these images come from there and there's nothing better than cutting out bits of paper as far as I'm concerned and then gluing them and stickering them down and then you have a really lovely reference point for your projects of things that you're going to make or would like to make. So these are a mix of dressmaking patterns and photos of lovely ladies from the time. So I'm going to hack the simplicity pattern and then I'm going to use the skirt from the 1940s bondage dress which I will link below and the sleeves are from the 1940s blouse hack that I did which I will also link below. There are tutorials, how-tos of both of those for you and I'm using this lovely viscose crepe from Missy Mop Fabrics. What I've done is I've pinned my front and my back of the blouse pattern onto spot and cross. I've lined up at the lower armhole and I've put the centre back onto a line of spot and cross and I've also lined up the centre front on a line of spot and cross and that way you just get all the right angles it just makes life a lot easier. I used the waistline indicator here and it's just ever so slightly above a line of spot and cross but I've also used that as the waistline and carried it across and actually what you can see on this pattern is that the waistline on the front and the back don't line up so you do need to be a bit careful about um, printed patterns and so on because the waistline will be the same on the front and the back but it's okay because this actually is a little bit high anyway and I was going to drop it um, so this line here now will be my waistline and I'll double check that this works when I put the skirt bit on. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna trace through everything, trace around everything. I don't need these bottom bits because they're, they're going um, and there'll be just like a couple of little tucks. I'm gonna do tucks here, keep those and create this waistline, but everything else is, is going to be retained and the same, so First things first, tracing it all out. Mm. Thank you, mister. Life with cats. And before I forget, if you enjoy vintage style sewing, then please subscribe to my channel because I really love sharing my sewing adventures with kindred spirits like yourself. It really does give me so much pleasure to use my pins in their lovely little vintage pin pot. I suppose it's the little things in life where we can take joy and pleasure. Once everything's cut out, I pin everything that I possibly can for the first little bit of sewing. 
And I'm doing a bit of an experiment with this collar for this dress because normally you would interface it, but I really don't like the cardboard effect you get with modern iron-on interfacing. And in original examples of collars that I've seen, you don't really get interfacing, even a fabric to reinforce the collars or cuffs or anything like that. So I'm gonna try it without and we'll see what happens. Now I'm ready to start sewing my shirt dress and that's my happy place. My lovely Bertha Benina is still not working, pedal issues again, so I'm still using this little singer that I bought my daughter and it's a really good machine actually and there's lots of breaks for Loki cuddles whilst I'm sewing. He likes to be involved, as you know. The collar is ready to turn through, which I'm doing here. I'm also eating a white chocolate mouse that a lovely student bought me. I make sure that the corners are all neat and crisp using a bamboo corner pointy gizmo. It's from Merchant and Mills and it's a gadget I highly approve of. And then I put my sleeves in. So I always put my sleeves in flat, which is not the instructions that you're given in dressmaking patterns. It's much easier. I pin the ends of each sleeve to the ends of the armhole, pin up to the gathering, and then I gather. I've done two rows of big stitches here together, and I use the bobbin threads to gather up the gathering and I gather and then I pin that down and then I just sew all in one go and it seems to work every single time. It's the next day and this is where I got up to last night. I just noticed now that the light is better that there is a boo-boo on this collar um, which you can't see too badly um which is annoying but it, it's not completely visible this really is my wearable toile and actually i don't think it's gonna bother me too much but i need to sort of make sure i don't do silly things like that see even to the best of us who've been sewing a long time boo-boos happen but i'm really really pleased with this so far I've got to put the zip in, I've done the buttonholes, I used my special buttonhole trick for slippery fabric which I can do a video on if you would like me to, it's um, yeah makes life much easier. So it's just the cuffs to hem, buttons to put on, zip in, finish that seam and hem and then finish the belt which I've started and then I am ready to wear my dress. I'm using an invisible zip in this dress because basically that's all I had. I'm not terribly fond of them because they have a tendency to break, but I'm putting it in in a method that I cover over on Patreon. One of the months is all about zips and different ways of putting in different zips. And if that sounds like something you're interested in, please follow the link below and have a look and see if you want to join Tara School of Dressmaking because that's where I do all my online teaching these days. I originally intended to use heart-shaped buttons to make this a very lovely dress but I didn't find any in time so I've just used these vintage flowery rose shape ones that I had and my dress is ready to wear. I have to say that I'm at absolutely over the moon with this make even though I feel that I rushed it a little bit and there are a couple of boo-boos but I wanted to feel fresh and flirty and I certainly feel like that all ready for spring. I'm really pleased with how the collar turned out without any interfacing just as it would have been in vintage dresses of the same kind. It sits beautifully much better actually than if I'd interfaced it and I just find that the dress is really really comfortable and I just feel like my best self which is basically what we want our clothes to make us feel. I can't wait to wear this out and about and I think I'm going to make about a million more of them. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video today and if you do give this hack a go then let me know I would love to hear about your versions and this pattern if you haven't used it then it's really worth a go I've made the trousers and the blouse numerous times and um, yeah really good value for money and especially if you do hacks like this thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend time with me here in my cottage by the sea in my sewing room in my cottage by the sea i really hope you've enjoyed yourselves and wherever you are in the world i hope you're keeping safe and well especially in these incredibly crazy times i'm sending my love to you wherever you are and i will see you next week where we're gonna be revisiting this pattern again I apologise in advance. Have a wonderful week, my lovelies. See you soon. Bye.